हेलो एवरन माई सेल्फ सचिन राठौर वर्किंग एज असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन मेकैनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट फ्रॉम वॉल्ट इंस्ट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर टुडे वी विल कंसर्न विथ द रोलिंग कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बेरिंग पार्ट फोर सो प्रीवियस टू दिस सेशन वी आर सीन द इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट अबाउट द रोलिंग कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बेरिंग नेक्स्ट वी आर सीन हाउ टू फाइंड आउट द स्टैटिक लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ द बेरिंग नाउ वी विल सी इन द पार्ट फोर एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन द लर्नर विल एबल टू select the bearing from manufacturing catalog in this slide we are going to see the selection of the bearing from manufacturing catalog so in that the step number 1 is to calculate the radial force and the axial force acting on the bearing so as the different forces acting uh, on the shaft so that force we have to consider that is acting on the bearing so we have to calculate the radial force and the axial force which is acting on the bearing the step number 2 is select the suitable type of the bearing for the applications so for this purpose certain guidelines are there so already we had seen these guidelines in the first ppt or the part 1 of the rolling contact bearing so just in the short we will see what are the guidelines so if the load is medium and low radial loads if the low and medium radial loads are acting on the bearing then we can select the ball bearing if the heavy radial loads are acting then we can select the roller bearing if there is a misalignment between the shaft at that times we can prefer the self aligned ball bearing or if the load is high that is in which the misalignment is going to occur at that time we can select the self allowing spherical roller bearing then if the low or medium thrust load is there that is the load which is acting along the axis of the shaft that is called as a thrust load at that times we can prefer the thrust ball bearing or if the heavy thrust load is there at that times we can select the cylindrical roller thrust bearing then the step number 3 is that determine the values of x and y that is the radial and the thrust factor from the manufacturing catalog <coughs> so you can pause this video and you can think about this if you already calculated the value of radial and the thrust uh, radial and the axial force on the bearing then why it is necessary to calculate the factors of radial and the thrust so you can think about this so this is a table from which we can select the value of x and y factors that is the radial and the thrust factor from the manufacturing catalog so this catalog i have taken from the vb bhandari book and which is already uh, which is available in the standard design data book so from this catalog we have to find out the value of the radial and thrust factor so already we had calculated the axial force acting on the bearing and the radial force acting on the bearing and c not is nothing but the static load carrying capacity of the bearing so this value we are knowing so just calculate the value of from the first row that is the fa by c not then find out the value of fa by fr so based on this relation this is a e is nothing but the constant value so based on this relation we have to select the value of the x and y step number 4 calculate the equivalent load so by using this equation that is a pe or it is also called as a p is equal to x into v into fr plus y into fa so from which we are knowing the value of the fr and fa that is the radial and the axial force and x and y are the radial and the thrust factors so that already in the previous slide we had seen how to calculate the value of x and y v is nothing but the rest factor that is depending upon your whether your the inner rest is going to rotate or the outer rest is going to rotate if the inner rest is going to rotate at that times we can use v is equal to 1 and if your the outer rest is rotated and the inner rest is stationary at that times we can use v is equal to 1.5 so the next the step number 
we have to decide the expected life of the bearing in million revolution so depending upon the past experience they had calculated the value of the expected life of the bearing so this is a catalog i have taken from the vp bhandari book so this is a standard catalog from which we have to select the value of the expected life of the bearing so in this table the two columns are there the first one is the wheel applications and second column is about the life of the bearing in million revolution so they have taken a different applications are like the auto if we are using the bearing in the automobiles cars or if you are using the bearing in the trucks trolley cars or the railroad cars at that time the lives are the difference so the values of the life corresponding corresponding to the different application they had given us in this catalog so we have to select the proper applications depending upon the proper application you have to select the life of the ball bearing from this catalog then the step number 6 in this step number 6 we have to calculate the dynamic load carrying capacity of the bearing so uh, the relation between life and the dynamic load is already we had seen uh, in the previous session <coughs> that l is nothing but the life in million revolution is equal to c by p raised to k where the k is a constant term and the value of the k is equal to 3 for the ball bearing and 10 by 3 for roller bearing and the remaining value the life Uh, so depending upon the applications we have to select the value of the life in million revolution that we had seen in the previous slide and p is nothing but the equivalent load that equivalent load we have to calculate by using the equation x into v into fr plus y into fa depending upon that we have to calculate the value of the equivalent load then you can easily get the value of dynamic load so here we have to consider the load factor so see that what is in by load factor the load factor we are using for calculating the required value of the dynamic load capacity according to the application so we have to select the value of the load factor depending upon the type of the drive if we are using the gear drive so in that the gear drive there are the three classification they have made for selecting this load factor if the rotating machine free from the impact load then we can use the load factor ranging in between the 1.2 to 1.4 if the reciprocating machines are there at that times we can use the load factor as a 1.4 to 1.7 if the impact machines are there like a hamper a hammer then we have to choose the load factor which is ranging in between 2.5 to 3.5 similarly if the belt drives are there in which i have to use the ball bearing at that times we have to select the appropriate load factor depending upon the type of the belt similarly for the chain drive we have to use the load factor which is given in this table i have taken this table from the vb bhandari book so while calculating the actual load that is the dynamic load acting on the bearing that is the value of the c is equal to p raised to 1 by k into uh, sorry so we have to calculate the value of the c so for calculating the value of the c we have to multiply just rearrange these equations and we have to multiply with the load factor for getting the exact amount of the dynamic load which is acting on the bearing then the step number 7 in this step number 7 we have to select the bearing from the manufacturing catalog using the following input so this input uh, they will provide you based on this we have to select the bearing specifications so this is a table for the bearing specification so in this tables uh, see that what are the terms they are going to use in this table small d is nothing but the diameter of the shaft capital d is the outer diameter of the bearing b is nothing but the width of the bearing c is nothing but the dynamic load carrying capacity of the bearing c not is nothing but the static load carrying capacity of the bearing and this is the designations we have to select depending upon this data so the input data are the type of the bearing shaft diameter and the dynamic capacity of the bearing so this table is going to provide the designation for the single deep single row deep groove ball bearing if suppose 
if I am consider considering if the diameter of the shaft is 25, I have to select or I have to give the designation. So, if the diameter of the shaft, we have to refer the first column for checking the diameter. So, if you observe that the diameter is 25 here, then if I have calculated the value of the dynamic load as we have seen in the previous slide, if the dynamic load, if I am considering if it is 9000 Newton, then I have to check where is the 9000. So, here this C column, this that is the dynamic load carrying capacity. So, here check out 3120, then 7610, then next 11200. So, we can choose the next value of this 9000 Newton. So, I can choose the value of the dynamic load which may be 11200. This value I have to uh, take and based on that I have selected the designation of the bearing is 6005. So, this is a procedure for giving the designation of the bearing. So, what the designations or the what is the specification of the bearing number? So, this is a bearing number that is a 6005. So, what it indicates? The bearing being a standard uh, mechanical element, it is designated by a number either 4 digit or the 5 digit. So, in which the last two digits specify the bore or the shaft size. So, if you observe that this last two digit that is a 0 4, it indicating the bore diameter or the shaft diameter. See that uh, last four digit all the four digit are the uh, last two digit are the 0 4 0 4 0 4. It indicating the size of the diameter just if you if are going to multiply with the 5 we are getting the diameter of the shaft as a 20. Then the third digit specify the series. So, if you observe that the third digit is 0, 2, 3, 4. Similarly, here the 0, 2, 3, 4, it indicates the series of the bearing. Then the fourth and the fifth digits indicates the type of the bearing. So, if you observe here the fourth or the fifth digit that is a six, six digit uh, that is a six numbers is indicating for the deep groove ball bearing. So, I have taken this references for this video. So, thank you all.